Welcome back, guys. When we neglect the important, there may well be a marked absence of whalers on the day of the funeral. So my advocacy this week is in the importance of politics and why we should all take it very seriously. As David Hunain wrote, and as is made evident every day in our lives, from how much we pay in taxes, our failing security, the lack of jobs, um, education jam, elections have far-reaching consequences for us all. Um, and to paraphrase the late famous Jamaican reggae artist, Peter Tosh, you may not be a politician, but you will, be indeed, you will indeed suffer the consequences of politics. And let me illustrate this by a tweet by um, someone on Twitter, Nafizi, and who talked about how um, the president of Cote d'Ivoire wants its a third term now and against the constitution of his country. And so this, is, this clearly happens because African leaders know they can take a chance on a mile because most of us, most of us as average African citizens, we're not in, interested in politics. Instead, we exist just to survive. And this is without knowing that there's a daily consequence for this. And our concentration is just to survive without knowing that our survival depends on politics. So the average person only considers himself useful only during election times, when it's time to vote. But I've had plenty of arguments also as well about Niger from Nigerians, especially about those of us in the middle class. We always often say, um, you know, politics is, is not for us, um, it's a very dangerous game. And, and I belong to this group as well. I, I myself, I'm, I'm part of it. And, and I, you know, as, as Bilal said, I abdicate my own political responsibility. Um, but I can tell you, I can accur accurately track the level of de development that we, we have, or the crisis of governance with our disinterest with, with, with politics. And this is prevalent, not just in Nigeria, but across the land, across the rest of Africa, that is. We hear stories of how bad politicians are how frightening the landscape is, how perhaps if you get into politics, you're bound to lose your life or your money. Well, the truth is that we are losing our lives daily. Gradually, we're losing our nation. We're losing our nation. We've lost it, really, some would say, to the rogues who continue to feast on the carcass of our commonwealth whilst we hide and pray. If we want a better country, a better state, a better local government, a better community, we have to go into the trenches as well and fight for what we want. Yes, indeed, politics may be dirty and often dangerous in this time. But as my people will say, the Igbo people, we have this saying that, babu yalogu. what it means is that we cannot, because people die in wars, become cowards and flee from a responsibility to protect our people and to save our own lives. It is time we fought this war to save our country and ourselves. There will be casualties. That's the reality. There will be loss of reputations, savings, health, limbs, or even lives. But there's no other way to save Nigeria than for all well-meaning people from across this land to get into the political arena. Our own very lives and those of our children depend on the fight we undertake today. The Americas, the Europe we often run to, waged, and are still waging their own wars to win a better society for themselves. It was not a gift from a god from above. And no matter how hard we pray, we must get off our callous knees and our hands and use our hands and our hearts and minds and go, get into the rings as well. It is because of our silence and our apathy that leaders like those in Ivory Coast, Zimbabwe and elsewhere will have the courage to think of illegally extending their tenure. And because they have no fears of repercussions for their misrule because we're not interested. So Nafizi in his tweet talked about this refusal of leaders in Africa to leave power as a feature of what he called the African disease, which must be studied. For me, it is not any African disease. Rather, the disease is the mass apathy and disinterest by the average middle class, meaning that the poor will always be used as cannon fodder. But we, the middle class, well, I'm lucky to count myself in that group, we must rise up. For according to my Michel Montaigne, he who fears he will suffer already suffers because he fears. No one will save us but ourselves. Absolutely, I agree with you. And um, I think it's about time that we realize that this, you know, I was saying to Bolaho earlier that I think we kind of imagine that World War III 
will be like a weapons type of war yeah. and stuff like that. We don't actually realize that this war is against the people. And if we don't see that, then we'll not understand what's actually happening here. Yeah. There is a war being waged against the, the public, the people. And until we wake up and realize that we're all going to suffer from this war. Um, it, it's not just the poor people suffering now, is it? You know, the yeah. middle class are losing their jobs. People don't have any livelihood because of COVID and whatnot. Um, and the government isn't really doing anything to help people, to buffer us, where the palliatives, where is everything? Nothing, you know? So I think we need to now realize that we're pretty much on our own. And the only strength we have is in numbers. We need to come together. together. We need to speak up in whatever way we can. Before I, I, I don't know if uh, Maisha wants to quickly say something before yeah. I will uh, call out <laughs> our religious leaders. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, um, you know, in truth, it, you know, this is one of I remember many years ago when people used to say to us that um, we get the leadership that we deserve, you know, I used to get offended and say, but what do we do to deserve that kind of leadership? But in truth, you know, maybe there's an element of um, apathy on our hearts and it's been going on for too long. And, you know, we are wonderful armchair critics and we complain a lot. And we do try. It's not as if we don't try. It's just that it comes in, you know, spurts. So, you know, we would um, protest for a day, two days, a week, a month. And then, you know, we all get back. I know it's really difficult because we live in very challenging um, circumstances. Um, also, because most people don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Life is actually very, very uncertain. So it makes um, it makes it difficult for people to want to um, take too many risks. But the other side of it is that um, you know, like America has said, we go to other parts of the world. If people had not stood their ground and fought for what they wanted, we wouldn't be able to um, go to those places just as you know as easily as, as we want. To. That's why, for me, Aisha, it's that. We already know that it is not in their interest to willingly. Exactly. It is not yeah. served a la carte. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, they also do not know that the religious centers they run to are also fleecing them. Because when they the state... Know. They don't know. They don't, they don't know. Look, <laughs> well, let me tell you. They don't, know. they don't. Because when the state, when the state you know, is unable to provide the basic things, so what some charlatans did was to stop, you know, act as stop gap. All these things that the state ought to give you, don't worry, we will, God will provide them. All you need to do is to key into these promises of God by bringing the little that you have. And, and so, yeah. you now believe that these little things, job, uh, good roads, safety, that yeah, government God. ought to give you, it's actually should God. come from God. Mm. And, and so that's why you want to travel level. from Lagos to Benin. You cover the steering, you cover the wheel, you cover the vehicle with the blood of Jesus. Rather than calling on the security to protect you. And so, so you believe. Them and then their, secondly, their, their position. secondly Obviously. because of all of this, mm -hmm. you now become the state to your siblings. Mm -hmm. You are the local government. You provide your road, you provide everything, you leave the rest for God. Mm -hmm. Until we realize that both religion centers and the government are consistently fleecing us. And we know we say, instead of going to um, those, um, what do you call it, uh, Holy Ghost and Holy Fire Ministry, we sit down on the express and say, look, we will not move until government takes Until something step. happens. Or, or, until something <laughs> happens. That's the day that we, will, we wake up and the, the, the country will move from this position to the position that it ought to be. Okay. Yeah. Or until we do I, that, forget I, I, I it. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a message in due season. Uh, this morning in the papers, you had uh, OBJ calling on the young people to take, take. back their country. Um, <laughs> I hope, I, the, the, source, the source is a problem um, because you might have the message, is, message is important. The message, message yeah. is clear mm. and it's, it's, it's real. I uh, speaking to a guy um, from one of the states mm. in the southeast when we, during the last elections, and we said, Look, uh, mm. nothing is going to happen, blah, 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 blah. I said, How many registered voters are in your state? He said, A million plus. How many came out for that presidential election? 300. Mm. So, how are we going to deliver on the change that if, we desire? If people don't participate. If people don't yeah. participate. On the election day, you're so, watching so, the match. Well, I'm, hold your thoughts there. So, <laughs> so this is exactly the point that we're making. That is time. We all, you all, 
through your heart into the ring. Um, and back to colonization, Paul Kenney says, Liberal Sushoma, sometimes you are funny. Liberals, you are funny. Uh, <laughs> but always straight to dig out the point. Um, and Sylvie, on that topic, Sylvie um, says, fact. Okay, Paul, thanks you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Sylvie. Um, we've not noted this, 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 this important, uh, your contribution. On the complete edition, one viewer, Benson for the ladies, mm, interesting guy, gives a thorough appraisal. And he, let, me, let me quote him here. He says, this is my first time I've seen your show. I'm impressed with the quality of the panelists and the depth and grip they have on the subjects. More especially, the independence of the opinions of the panelists is worth remarking on and celebrating. My brief stint in politics exposed me to the fact that programs such as yours are nominally for the highest bidder, where questions are either asked or tamed, depending on what has been sent in in a day before, the, a day before by the government or, or I don't know. Um, because of this, I have been on local TV strike. He's, uh, Benson is saying that because of this, he's been on local TV strike for almost two years now. And he continues, it was refreshing to watch such an independent and yet to be entangled program today. The freshness in the opinions and the fresh perspectives give one hope that things can be done differently in this country, despite the allure and pressure from politicians. This program is about the purest there is out there now. No frills and very freshly cut topics, a departure from the highly commercialized and entangled ones out there. However, a lot can be improved upon. I hope our producer is listening. However, a lot can be improved upon too. While the program is focused mainly on politics, nuanced programming that intentionally targets the attention of our team in youth should be introduced. Their viewership should be pursued and solicited with age-appropriate discussions and panelists too. Um, I, think I'm, I think I can count for a young person. You know. for real. Yeah, for real. Look at my sneakers. The youth, <laughs> the youth need to be targeted deliberately. They seem disenchanted from politics, but can be sucked into watching and participating in the appropriate segmentation of your topics and, and guests. The charge by Aisha for people to get engaged in advocacy will have been best suited by the youth that are almost lethargic and redundant. On the whole, I rate the program on its authenticity and unbiased approach to issues 80%. That is brilliant and, and that is wonderful. Thank you very much, Benson. Um, uh, so Benson, I, I, you know, I thank you for your feedback. It's music to our ears um, and uh, keep it locked, as they say, and uh, as we continue to advocate with us, and continue to advocate with us rather, on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, um, the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, um, hashtag The Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com, The Advocate. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So over to you, uh, Gwalaon. Emeka says there are sober times. So why all the drama? Uh, I may seem to be providing some light relief after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.